Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N A. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 63. Lesson number 63, three, day 3063. Three is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition, third edition, day 63, and we happen to be on page number 263. Problem number 19 is what we're going to do. And as you can see here, it's labeled as 19A. So the problem that you see in the book, and I hope that you have the book in front of you, you must have the book in front of you as you're doing the work with me. The problem that you see in front of you, number 19, we're calling it part A. After we finish today's problem, we're going to do three more videos, three more days, the next three days, where we'll do deal with three more parabolas which are not in the book. And we're going to label them as 19B, 19C, and 19D. Do you understand? Problem for today that is in the book is, is already on the blackboard, as you can clearly see. It says, for the given parabola y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 12, find its x and y intercept. x and y intercept, I'm looking at the book here. Find the coordinates of its vertex. Find the equation of the line of symmetry. And finally, to give the equation of this parabola in the vertex form. This part is not in the book, and neither is, they're not looking, they're in the book they're not looking for the line of symmetry. So there is some extra stuff here. Let's get going, shall we? As always, the very first thing we must understand is that a parabola, the equation of a parabola is a quadratic equation. And a quadratic equation can be solved by three different methods. Three different methods. One is what is known as, let's put them on the side here, the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. Yeah, as long as you can memorize the formula, you can use this thing, quadratic formula. Or we can, or we can uh, use what is known as completing the square. Uh, the method is known as completing the square. And finally, the last method is what is known as factorization. Most people most people reach for factorization. Factorization of the three methods here, factor of the three methods that are listed here to solve a quadratic equation, to find the roots of the quadratic equation. Factorization is the weakest of the three tools. It is the weakest one because it only works, listen very carefully, it only works, the method of factorization will only work if the factors, if the roots, had happen to be nice whole numbers. If the root of a given equation happens to be, so I'm just going to make something up, if it happens to be negative 3 plus or minus uh, 17 squared over 19, if, it, if these are the roots of the equation, there is no way in hell we're going to be able to find these roots by factorization. It's not going to happen. For factorization to work, it has to be nice whole numbers, which is why it's the weakest of the tool. We're going to start with that one. We're going to see if we can actually factorize this equation. Okay, and then we're going to do the other, other three methods. And of course, it doesn't matter which, which of these three methods we use, we should always get the same answer, obviously. Let's factorize this thing. And when we factorize it, we can, we can start answering the question here. So here's our parabola. We're going to rewrite it here. Y, we are told, Y, we are told, is x squared minus 4x minus 12 and we're going to set it equal to 0. We're going to set it equal to 0 because we are looking for the roots. So if setting it equal to 0, if this is your parabola, y is equal to 0 here and y is equal to 0 here because it's the x-axis. We're looking for where it touches the x-axis. And those are the roots. Those are the solutions. Where is y equal to 0? Those are the roots. Where does it cut the x-axis? So when we, when, we, when we factorize it, we will find the x-intercepts. Finding the y-intercept is very simple. Y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, this is 0 and this is 0. Y-intercept, you can clearly see, is negative 12. Right here. Y, it just happens, to, I happen to draw a parabola like this, where it has a negative intercept right here. Y-intercept is negative 12. So the coordinate of this point, let's call it point A. 
coordinate at this point has to happens to be 0 and negative 12. That's very easy. Finding the x-intercept is what we have to work on. So let's get going, shall we? So we're looking for two numbers. Okay, listen carefully. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 12. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 12 and whose sum has to be negative 4. Whose sum, same two numbers, has to be negative 4. And we have to think of two such numbers. Can you think of two such numbers? 12 can, we can have a product of 12 by 3 times 4, 6 times 2, 3 times 4. It gives us 12, but we're not going to find the sum to be negative 4. It has to be 6 and 2. 6 and 2. In, in particular, negative 6 and a positive 2. Negative 6 and a positive 2 will end up, will, will, will sum to negative 4. And the product of negative 6 and, and a positive 2 is negative 12. So let's do this, shall we? Perhaps I'm explaining too much. So we're going to break this negative 4x. We're going to break this negative 4x into negative 6x and a positive 2x. So y equals x squared. Negative 4x is same as negative 6x plus positive 2x minus 12 equals to 0. Let's take out x from these two first terms. When we take out the x, we get end up with x minus 6. I'm going to pick up some speed. Now we're looking at these two terms, and the common factor is positive 2. After we take away positive 2, we are left with x from the third term. And what number times positive 2 is going to give us negative 6? The answer is negative, negative 12. The answer is negative 6. And this whole thing equals to 0. And now we look at these quantity, this quantity and that quantity. The common factor here, the common factor is x minus 6. This is the common factor. And we're going to take it out. x minus 6 is the common factor. When we take it out, from the first quantity we are left with x. And from the second quantity we are left with positive 2. And this equals to 0. If the, whole, if the, if the product of two quantities is equal to 0, that implies if the product... If the product of two quantity a times b, we are told, is 0, then either a has to be equal to 0, or b is equal to, has to 0, or maybe they are both 0. But one of them has to be at least 0. a times b equals 0, which means either a is equal to 0, or b is equal to 0. Which implies that either x minus 6 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 has to be equal to 0. If x minus 6 is equal to 0, which means x has to equal to positive 6, and, or x has to equal to negative 2. Those are our x-intercepts. As you can see, positive 6, oh, let me redraw this thing. We could actually continue here. It just happens the way I drew it freehand. This is positive 6 here, so it's positive 6 and a 0, and this happens to be negative 2 and a 0. Eventually, I'm going to redraw this parabola. Let's re redraw it right now. We can erase all this thing. We're dealing with factorization, then we'll worry about quadratic formula and completing the square. Let's redraw the Let's redraw the parabola properly so that it looks a little bit decent. So we're looking for positive 6 and a negative 2. I shouldn't have done it like this because we only have negative 2 on this side. Sometimes if you make too much fuss, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2. So it's negative 2 right here and a positive 6 right here. What does it tell us? It tells us our x-intercept. y-intercept we already figured out. y-intercept is negative 12. We're not going to worry about it. When x is equal to 0, y is negative 12. From negative 2 to positive 6 is a distance of 8. What does it tell us? The fact that there's a distance of 8, it tells us the line of symmetry. Because it has to be symmetric. It's a parabola, a symmetric picture. So we go four units. Here we go. This is one, two, three, four. Right here. Right here is our line of symmetry. And the equation of the line of symmetry is x equals to positive two. The equation of the line of symmetry, equation of the line of symmetry is x equals to positive two. This is the equation of line of symmetry. x equals to positive 2. But once we know the line of symmetry, we know the x coordinate of the vertex. Because that's why it's called symmet line of symmetry, because it's going to sit like sit here somewhere. So we know what the x coordinate is. Once we know the x coordinate of the vertex, we can find the y coordinate by simply substituting x into this equation. 
by simply substituting x equals to 2 in here, we get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 12. And when we do that, we'll get the y-coordinate of the vertex. So this is going to give us 4 minus 8 minus 12, minus 8 and minus 12 minus 20, and a 4, so it's minus 16. There we go. We just look at it as vertex. Let's put it right here. Let's put it right here. And the coordinates of this vertex are negative, positive 2, positive 2, you see, 1, 2. As you can see, it's 4 units from, from this way. From here it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and from here it's 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Positive 2 and a negative 16. Well, that's the vertex. We already know the y-intercept. Y-intercept is negative 12. When, when x is equal to 0, it's negative 12. So if this is 16, if this is 16, halfway is going to be negative 8, and 3 quarters of the way is going to be negative 12, right here. So now we have enough points where we can do something with it. We know, we know it goes through this point, we know it goes through this point, we know it cuts the y-axis here, and this is where it sits. So here we go. Voila, that's our parabola. That's the parabola we're dealing with. So that was, that was one way of figuring it out, the coordinates of the vertex. And then this method, we were able to find the factors, we were able to find factorization, we were able to employ the method of factorization because the roots happen to be whole numbers. And how did we know the roots were whole numbers? Because we were able to find the factors very easily. We were able to find the factors of negative 6 and positive 2, they were whole numbers. And through method of factorization, we can figure out the x-intercepts, because the solutions are the x-intercepts. Once we have the x-intercept, half pair in the middle, is the line of symmetry. Once we know the line of symmetry, we know the x-coordinate of the vertex. Once we know the x-coordinate of the vertex, we put it back in the original equation and we can find out the y-coordinate of the vertex. But as you can see, this is a very laborious and roundabout way. There is a quicker way. And the quicker way is to be able to write this equation in the vertex form from the very beginning or use the quadratic formula. So let's first use the vertex form, equation, equation in the vertex form, and then I'm going to show you that we can get this, and then I'm going to show you that the quadratic formula obviously is going to yield the same result. So let's do this, shall we? We need the room, so we're going to start all over again. We're going to erase everything except, of course, prep the parabola. So here we go. We are told we don't need any of this. We are told that y equals that. Watch what happens. The method, the method that we use in order to find the equation in the vertex form, equation of a parabola that is, in the vertex form is called, the method is called, or we just erased it, is called completing the square. So here we go, y is equal to, and if you if you feel that I left uh, out something or I went too fast, watch the previous videos. We have done it already two or three times in the last, yesterday and day before yesterday. Watch, watch the videos in proper sequence, do you understand? They go in certain order for a reason. So this is already x squared, we don't have to worry about it, it has a coefficient of 1, we don't have to worry about it. Minus 2 times x times, 2 times x times what is going to give us 4x? 2 times x times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and then x is going to give us 4x, the negative 4x. You see how we get the middle term? And then minus 12. But minus 12 is not what we're looking for right now. We want to complete this square. We want to complete this square, and that's going to give us this 2 squared. As you can see, this is a complete square. I'm going to erase all of this thing. This is too much. Why is it a complete square? Because it is written, because it is written in this form. Our x, our x is our a, a squared minus, you see, minus, minus 2a, and our b is 2, 2ab. Let's not put a, a squared minus 2ab, plus b squared. a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is simply a minus b whole squared. And in this case, and in this case, our a is represented by x, so we're going to have x minus b, which is 2. 
So this whole thing that we wrote here is simply x minus 2 whole squared. But we'll worry about that in a second. Now, we have to finish this thing what we started out here. Don't forget that we have a negative 12 here. So we need to put a negative 12 here back. And what else do we need to do? The second thing we need to do here, pay attention, okay? We have the x squared, we have ne negative 2 times x times 2, which is negative 4x. But we introduced this 2 squared. It just came out of nowhere. We can't do that. We cannot change what is given to us. So now we have to undo what we did, what we did before. What we have done before is to add the 2 squared. We must subtract it. You see? These two things undo each other. Whatever we did before, we must undo it. If this was positive, this has to be negative. If this were negative, this would have been positive. We must undo it. We must kill each other. Now let's see what we get. As we already talked about it, this is simply x minus 2. All of this is simply x minus 2 whole squared. And then minus 12, negative 12, and a negative 2 squared is negative 16. And that is our y. That is our y. I should have written a little bit lower. Let's write it a little bit lower. Right here is actually. Right here. y is equal to x minus 2 whole squared minus 16. And what do you suppose it tells us? It gives us the equation of the parabola in the vertex form because it tells us the vertex right here by the visual inspection by the mere visual inspection we can tell that because it is negative 2 it tells us the parabola has been shifted 2 units to the right or to the left to the right this counterintuitive again I have discussed this many a times in the past I'm not going to keep doing it over and again, over again as to why it is Watch the previous video. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for you to watch this thing in the proper series, in the proper sequence, that is. Don't go around skipping things. Otherwise, I cannot assume that you have learned the previous stuff. The negative tells us, negative 2 tells us, it has been shifted 2 units to the, to the right. Not to the left, to the right. You can see, 2 units to the right. 1, 1, 2. The parabola has been shifted 2 units to the right. And... It has shifted and 16 units down. This negative 16 tells us it is 16, 16 units down right here. We found the vertex. The vertex, look, by looking at it, it tells us that the coordinates of the vertex are positive 2, not negative 2, positive 2 and a negative 16. Just like we found here. Just like we found here. And that's what they were looking for. They were looking for the equation of the parabola in the vertex form. The equation of the parabola in the vertex form is what we see here in the box. I'm going to put another box around it. Right here. That's the square. Do you understand? So we found the equation in the vertex form. We found the x and y intercept. We found the line of symmetry. And that's about it. And that's all there is. Once we have the coordinates of the vertex, we can look at the, we'll put it here, we can find the y, y intercept very easily by putting x equal to 0. And uh, that's about it. Oh, oh, we, we have to finish this thing and we also haven't done quadratic formula. So we have, so once we have found this thing, we can look at the vertex, we can find the y intercept very easily. We have, we have to talk about the x intercept. How does this give us x intercept? This does not, the way it is sitting here, it does not give us x-intercept. X-intercept means y has to equal to zero, which means in order to find, in order to locate, in order to locate this point, let's call it point P and point Q, the x-intercept, in order to locate this point, this quantity has to equal to zero, because y is equal to zero. And we work on this thing, and it will give us negative two and a positive six, which we're gonna do it here to show it to you. Very quickly, okay? Let's put it here. So y is equal to x minus 2 whole squared minus 16 and we're going to set it equal to 0. Okay, watch what happens. Set it equal to 0. Bring the 16 to the other side. We end up with x minus 2 whole squared equals 16. Once the 16 on the other side, now 
we take a square root of both sides. We take a square root of this side, we get x minus 2 whole square. And when we take a square root, we have to, we have to worry about the positive and the negative root. Because square root of 9 is positive 3 and negative 3. So we have to worry about positive and negative. Square root of 16. That's the part you have to keep in mind. But that's just 4. That's just 4. And once we take the square root of this quantity, it becomes x minus 2. There we go, we are done. Which means, which implies, which implies that x is equal to either positive 4, and we bring the 2 to the other side, we end up 2, or x is equal to x is equal to negative 4, and we bring the 2 to the other side, we become positive 2. So we end up with positive 6 and a negative 2. Positive 6 and a negative 2. Just like before. Just like before x is either equal to positive 2 or neg positive 6 or negative 2. The third method, of course, is to use the quadratic formula, which I'm not going to do right now. It's enough, it's enough. You know how to use the quadratic formula, and you will find the quadratic formula will give you the same result. Take my word for it. Quadratic formula is going to give us the same result. We're going to call it a day. Here's, the here's, your, here's your homework for tomorrow. We're going to do the same thing that we did today in this today, in this video, which is to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercept, find the find the coordinates of the vertex, find the line of symmetry, and write the equation in the vertex form for the for this parabola. This is the homework for tomorrow. Y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 15. Y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 15. Do the same work that we did today for this one so that when you watch the next video you have something to compare with. Do your work yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.